Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Rick Christ, Scout Executive and CEO of the Minzy Trails Council of the Boy Scouts of America. Rick has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Rick, for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate you having us. Talk about the founding of Boy, of Boy Scouts and the founding of the Minzy Trails Council. Well, the Boy Scouts are dating back to 1910, uh, founded by Lord Baden-Powell, uh, eventually then brought to America uh, for, uh, for a youth movement to help build character and, and strengthen the, uh, the community uh, with, at that point, good, good young men. Uh, in 1969, the Mincy Trails Council was formed, uh, which is the local affiliate of the National Boy Scouts, uh, where we cover six different counties, and that was a, a, a combination of multiple different smaller councils uh, that merged to make the Mincy Trails Council in 1969. Uh, since that point in time, we've, we've acquired a couple other councils that emerged into us. Uh, and recently we just acquired the remainder of Warren County, New Jersey uh, within the last 10 years. So that's the, uh, the quick history on Mincy Trails Council. Uh, six county total service area with just under uh, 10,000 uh, young men and ladies and, uh, and about four, four and a half thousand adults. So describe how many staff you have, your budget, um, and and um, the uh, the scope of your uh, different programs that you provide to your scouts. Sure, I think the the, the original uh, plan of Lord Baden Powell when it was brought to America was the structured activity, which still exists today. So we have uh, kind of jumping back here. We we have a staff of about about twenty five full time employees uh, for for the six counties. Uh, in the summertime, we, we we spike up to about another almost two hundred total employees. Uh, when we have our summer camps in operation, we, we employ about 150 to 60 uh, young men and women who uh, run as our counselors and our camp directors for our summer operations. Uh, altogether, it's about a three and a half million dollar operating budget and about 16 million total assets uh, that the organization owns that we manage on an annual basis. Uh, we run programs for, uh, for now boys and girls, uh, grades K, uh, K through 12 uh, in our Cub Scouting program, which is our, our K through 5 program. Uh, we then have a program called Scouts BSA, uh, which is the, what was called the Boy Scout program, the traditional Boy Scout program, the tan shirts. Uh, we just had that name change this past year when we welcomed young ladies to the scouting program. And that's for uh, really boys and girls grades 6 through 12. Uh, after that point, we have uh, two type of co fully co-ed programs. Uh, venturing, which is based on careers or uh, based on interests and hobbies. And that's uh, fully co-ed mixed males and females together. And that program has existed for about 15 years. Uh, we also have an exploring program, and exploring is career awareness based. And again, this has been co-ed since the 70s. Uh, and that's uh, purely we survey schools and school officials tell us what the interests uh, career-wise for their students are. And then we find companies in the, in the corporate world to match up and provide explore post experiences and it's career experience experiences for the young men and women to enjoy and learn about before they actually go to college and possibly waste their parents' money uh, secondary education. Uh, so th they're the main programs we offer uh, within our Cub Scout and our Scout BSA program. We offer special uh, specialized programs called Scout Reach, uh, which is a program designated for boys and girls who wouldn't normally be able to uh, attend a traditional scouting program in the evening, uh, based possibly because of uh, uh, lack of parental support, uh, lack of financial resources, or, or maybe just transportation issues, or maybe they live in a community where they don't want to go out in the evening. Uh, so we run those programs after school on site and they're fully funded by friends and donors uh, and, for the young men and ladies. And this is very important because you have people coming into the scouting experience from different backgrounds, from different communities, from different economic uh, uh, circumstances. And so what you're trying to do is to create a scouting experience that blurs those differences and deals with people where they, where they live, respects the differences as well, mm -hmm but really um, is taking this sort of core philosophy of experiential learning, of community, of, of um, fellowship, or, uh, or uh, the, the idea of, of uh, boys and girls sort of um, working together to, toward common purpose. And you're trying to create that sort of level playing field, which is really the American ideal. Right, it's it's taking people where they come from and bringing them together and working together and achieving together and enjoying together. So many uh, people in our communities communities now are first generation uh, scouters. Uh, so meaning these these young men and ladies who are in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and Scout PSA programs right now 
are 12 and 13 year olds who have no parents who have ever been involved in scouting before. Right. Uh, so it's about that first generation of, uh, of experience for them. And different, uh, different ethnicities, Absolutely. different experiences. You have uh, newly arrived Americans. You have people who have, who have come in to integrate into the community mm -hmm. uh, from outside. How do you deal with things like uh, language issues or, or um, uh, different sensibilities? How do, you, how do you respect that and yet create that sort of common experience? Uh, a lot of it starts uh, on the top level, our staff. Uh, the staff member who runs our, our scout reach program is, is bilingual. He's a Hispanic uh, gentleman, uh, and he has been with us for close to 15 years. Uh, when we uh, hire teachers or find teachers or educators or volunteers that run the programs, uh, often enough they're, uh, they're of the same his Hispanic or other ethnicities uh, where they can speak the language to the kids and the kids feel very comfortable, uh, and the school officials feel comfortable with them. So it it's kind of starts on top, and we work with... Uh, our staff to make sure that when we find people uh, to run the programs for us, that there there are other folks who understand all the different important pieces of what uh, makes scouting important to that family. It's also interesting to hear how you refer <clears throat> to your scouts. These are young men and young ladies, right? These are young adults. So there's there's a recognition of that, but there's not a and that, but but there's also a respect that you're granting people, and respect is a big part of scouting, isn't it? It is, you know, we have uh, 12 laws we live by, uh, and uh, well, respect is not one specifically, it, it inter intertwines between many of our scout laws. So talk about the, the those scout laws. Sure, we have uh, 12 scout laws, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, reverent, and they're, they're the 12 pieces that we, we ask our scouts and our leaders to, to abide by not only in, uh, in their scouting time, but as they live their life norm, uh, throughout the normal day of, of interaction with adults and volunteers and other people in the community, because we know that uh, 100 plus years, this has been a successful program built on that structured program we, we talked about earlier, but also built on the scout open scout laws, uh, knowing that people who live by those 12 points uh, will become better citizens in time. And in, in addition to your, your over 9,000 youth members, um, and your, your over 10,000 uh, campers, uh, you also have a considerable cadre of adults. So in, in a real sense, you're helping sure. adults deal with, with their children and, and their own journey through life. So how does that actually function? When you have an adult come in who might not have a, a scouting background or maybe has had a scouting background in a different community, how do you bring them in how do you get them oriented? How do you get them situated? So we have an onboarding process uh, which starts uh, as a new leader. Usually the new leader starts in the September, October timeline along with the new scout. Right. And uh, so part of this onboarding process, and it's actually one of our, our, our three-year uh, plan goals that we just came through was, was uh, additional support and resources to them uh, to make life easy because uh, as, as a, in sports, sports are seasonal. Everything is three, four months, uh, really, when it comes to most youth activities, uh, where scouting is a year-round program. So when you sign up as a volunteer or as a parent, you are taking on quite a commitment, and we appreciate that and understand it, and we thank you for that. Uh, however, there is a lot of stuff that has to be taught, how to build a lesson plan, how to run your meetings. Uh, just yesterday, with the Healthy Night Away, or two nights ago, we had uh, the, uh, it was a classroom management session for some of our leaders that run our after-school programs. Uh, to teach them how to uh, keep kids aimed on the right purpose of the agenda for the meeting and how to redirect them and how to organize your class or how to organize your scout program to keep your kids uh, focused versus uh, scattered all over the place. Uh, we have a, a volunteer crew of a uh, team of people who go out and train um, all of our first-time leaders. Uh, we have uh, national online training resources where you can take online at your home as you need be. We have uh, Facebook Live training sessions now for a lot of our new DEN leaders. Uh, we also have, uh, beyond the entry level piece, uh, we have all the, uh, the, the higher level trainings for leaders who've been around for a while who want to continue their, their experience. And we actually, it's like a train the trainer where we run courses to teach people how to be volunteers who instruct the new volunteers. Uh, and we also have a, a whole plethora of youth protection uh, trainings that all the, it's required by the uh, by the Boy Scouts before our leaders meet with boys and girls to make sure they understand uh, all the nuances, how to keep our kids safe in the programs also. Well, that's also very important because in, in uh, so many respects, you're creating uh, both community, but with community, 
comes risk. So you have to make sure that, that these kids are being uh, appropriately trained, that the adults are being appropriately trained, that they're being informed. Uh, but you also have to uh, be realistic and, and uh, be protective of, this, of these children who are uh, being entrusted into your care, these young people, these young uh, 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 men and women. Uh, so you're, you're going at this with eyes very much wide open, aren't you? We are. Yeah, it's, it's important for, for families to feel uh, trust in the Boy Scouts uh, when you register your son or daughter for, for, Sc for Cub Scouting or, Boy or Scout BSA. Uh, that's that's the, one of the most important pieces our organization was built on was, uh, was trust and, and beliefs in the organization. And it ties back to the structure and the points of the Scout Law and the Scout Oath uh, and making sure families are comfortable with that and understand it and understand that as an organization we do everything we can to keep them safe but also train the volunteers who will be with their kids in order to keep kids safe as well too. In, in a real sense, the whole idea of, of inclusion and uh, the, the, the various um, laws and, and, and values that, that the Boy Scouts have, it's really an everyday thing, isn't it? It's an everyday practice. We, we ask our leaders and, and instructor leaders to, to abide by. There's, uh, there's policies in place for the young men and ladies to participate in, whether it's uh, uh, always using the buddy system so you're never alone uh, with 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 right. adult, you're always with another friend of yours, so there's somewhere else to fall back on. Uh, you know, there's there's requirements and there's parent uh, inserts in our scout books uh, that uh, when a new boy or girl joins, that you should walk through with your parents talking about who is that safe person they can go to if they feel strange about something. How to trust that gut feeling. Right. Uh, and, and also then on the adult side, we have multiple levels of youth protection training that the adults are required to take uh, before they begin to meet with the Boy Scouts. Uh, and, and all the other scouts who, who may be part of it. Uh, but they also understand you know, there is a two deep leadership policy, so no different than for the, the young men and ladies. It's the buddy system, and there's an adult side of the two deep leadership policy where you, they know not to be alone with any boy or girl uh, to make sure that they have a second person with them. Really what you're doing is you're creating an environment that is safe, that is secure, uh, that is deliberately uh, made so, and then you're, uh, you're allowing a lot of freedom um, but also providing these guideposts of scouting uh, to, to create sort of a context for learning. It's a very interesting and delicate balance that first Lord Baden-Powell created and has been evolved by leaders like yourself and your staff. The, the, the learning environment is, uh, is incredibly important because what we like to be able to talk about, and especially with our summer camping programs, and when, when uh, young men and women come to our camps on the weekends during the off season, non-summer months, uh, we call it our learning laboratory, and that's mm -hmm. the camp. And uh, no different than if you're at school and you're in a classroom, uh, when you come to summer camp, you schedule a merit badge schedule for your week at camp, just like you would schedule your, uh, your classes when you go to college. And uh, we, we, we joke about it, but it's a very serious that, uh, you know, we, we give you the environment to fail successfully, uh, because some of the most important things you'll learn is through failure, and we like to be able to uh, provide that comfort zone for them to fail successfully and learn. Well, Rick Christ, thank you so much for sharing how you help our youth uh, become part of a greater community. And thank you so much for your insights. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. It's good to see you.